leader, ladies and gentlemen. I feel deeply honored for the invitation extended to me to join our prominent member, prominent mother and sister here to celebrate the Pan-African Women's Day, which is observed each year exactly on the 31st of July, which is what we are doing today. At the same time, we also celebrate 60 years, 60 years of our existence since its foundation on this day, 31st July 1962, in Dar es Salaam, United Republic of Tanzania. Since its establishment, power has been in the past to fight for better time liberation of the African continent. From the yoke of colonialism, from the yoke of apartheid, and has contributed immensely to the promotion of gender equality, the rights of women, and women empowerment in post colonial Africa. Power has fought side by side with us as Namibians during the difficult years of our liberation struggle by providing all round material and logistical support to Swat in order to launch and maintain an effective struggle against the apartheid colonial regime. Indeed, there has been a strong bond of solidarity between Pau and Swapo Women's Council. Swapo leaders such as Mekuru Kutuse Apollos, Comrade Susana Vigima, Dr. Lipetin Amabela, Comrade Pendukeni Ipula Itana, the others were mentioned, and I will not finish them, and others said on power structures. The Namibian people will remain forever indebted to the immense contribution of power, <coughs> contribution of power to the overall freedom that we as Namibia enjoy today. Therefore, this celebration is a fitting tribute to this revolutionary African women organization for the role it has played in the liberation of Africa, while at the same time recognizing its critical contribution in the socio-economic development of the African people. Our directors of serving. This 60th power anniversary takes place against the backdrop of COVID-19 pandemic, which has caused unprecedented negative impact on the lives of our people on the African continent only decimated our population, women, men, children, but has also negatively affected our national economies to such an extent that it has that it will take years to reverse its negative impact on our lives. Therefore, as we continue to face the challenge for the COVID-19 pandemic, power should continue to take the lead in public awareness campaign against this dreadful disease across the length and breadth of our continent. Director ceremonies, notwithstanding the positive milestones achieved, namely the attainment of political freedoms, numerous and daunting challenges remain and continue to impede our people on the African continent from enjoying the fruits of the, our, our independence. These include social and health challenges, as well as lack of technical capacity to ensure that our citizens, particularly women, 
they have a right to place in, the, in society and they realize their full potential. This has been a wonderful day. People came here saying that they woke up very early in the morning. So I woke up in the room and I managed to be here. So there is no excuse not to be here. But the witness we have been giving, if, if, if I was just attending a conference somewhere, it should not have been a, con a conference I have to witness this in my own country. That we are so shamefully, scandalously, maliciously terrible men in Namibia that we can do such a thing. It's a shame. This should not happen to an African woman anywhere in the world. Not at all. How many times do you have to, to do that to a, to, a, to a human being? You can't do that even if you are a boxer. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to say was my former student, now Prime Minister, she became Prime Minister even before I was Vice President. <laughs> When we were in exile in the 60s, before 1975, when a lot of people came, we used to be invited to international organizations. Some of these organizations were for women. And where, who do you send? We send men. And they will read as follows. We the women of Namibia. <laughs> <laughs> we are suffering because we are being operated and placed by the government of apartheid South Africa and we need this and we need this and we need that. So when I look at the line, the, the people who are sitting in front, I must say that I am the only one. And today, I must be able to say, we the women. <laughs> we the women of Africa demand our rights to education, to health, to proper jobs, to be exactly where we want to be in society. Should no limit, there should not be any limit that once you become a minister is enough. No. Once you become a prime minister, it is enough. No. Once you become a vice president, no. You can become. Give it the president. You say. <laughs> so it is also very difficult to speak at the end. Everything is already said. You are basically repeating what other people have said. So, yeah, one more page, two more pages, ten more pages, I am the last one to speak. <laughs> so, and I, Madame, you said something nice about our first lady. She is with my brother. The president is my brother. And in Africa, when you say that the president is your brother, they think it's from the same family. No. We are political brothers, we campaign together, uh, we are fighting on the same side. That that's the brother that we are talking about. I'm not talking about it. It's, it's not a it's a kind of it's not a goomba, and I'm not, not a kind of I'm a goomba. So don't go around saying that in Namibia there is nepotism. <laughs> The vice president is the brother. He's the brother in terms of the struggle for emancipation. Despite women being the majority of our population, 
accounting for more than 50% of our citizens. The majority of women remain at the periphery of decision making, both in the political and social and economic sphere. In addition, women continue to be subjected to domestic and gender based violence and other social ills. Therefore, what is required to be done urgently is to ensure that we empower our women socially, economically, and politically. Here in Namibia, the ruling party, was said already by the Vice President of Oswapo, has adopted the 50 50 gender policy, which ensures that we have equal representation of both women and men at all levels in governance in all our party structures. At government level, we have adopted policies and laws that empower women to enable them to occupy senior and managerial positions. Why? Which were previously and dominantly only occupied by men. I remember in 1990 when we gained our independence, all the permanent sector level jobs were reserved for men, and on top of that, only men of one color. Just imagine a country run by the majority, by the minority in terms of population and also by the minority in terms of gender. But they were happy with that. Now they are advancing. I they wait the constitution we have drafted for them. They say, I wish I'm my rights. You are violating the constitution. Yes. But when they were doing it, they were doing it very fair, fine with that, that's no question. As the good doctor, she shared the same, we shared the same experiences. I'm glad they are sitting, the two sisters are sitting next to one another. <laughs> Indeed, the real empowerment of women can only happen if we double the enrollment of women at our institutions of higher learning across African continent to enable them to acquire relevant knowledge and skills. At this juncture, let me share with you some that data obtained from the National Council of Higher Education in Namibia, taken in 2019. During the past five years, female student enrollment increased at an average rate 10 times per annum compared to male students who are stagnating. Enrollment in terms of the fields of studies indicate women dominating in the fields of health, education, agriculture, physical and their male counterparts continue to dominate in the field of science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And yet women's percentage share is improving in all the fields. These concrete strategies will be will in the long term enable and empower women to move away from being employed as cleaners, babysitters, and secretaries into managerial, engineering, mining, finance, and manufacturing fields. Other, people, other speakers mentioned those things. By so doing, we will not only empower African women, but it will also enable our countries to broaden the scope of technical know-how, thereby enhancing our national economies to develop, expand, and create much needed jobs, especially for our youth. It is my sincere hope that our efforts in Namibia and in other countries will be liberated and cascaded in every country on our African continent.
It is only through this that we will fully free our women from the negative vices of underdevelopment, poverty, and food insecurity. Against this background, it is commendable that we continue the context of celebrating 60th anniversary of Pau. Pau has coined a fitting theme, and I quote it, Africa's Day, African Women's Day, Advancing Women's Human Capital, for inclusive, sustainable development, addressing the scourge of violence while enhancing food security and food nutrition in the African continent. We have witnessed all that. We need to empower in terms of education, we need to empower in terms of health. That would not be good health if we don't have it. Therefore, I would like to encourage how and its able leadership and its able leadership to blaze the trail of freedom until all women on the African continent and those in diaspora are empowered educationally, technologically, socioeconomically, and political. Directors of ceremonies during the period of 60 years of the existence of how eminent African women and other individuals made immense contributions to this organization to enable it to carry out its mandate successfully. It is therefore a fitting tribute that the leadership of how has decided to honor some of these unsung heroes for their dedication and commitment to the ideals and work of this continental organization. It is therefore important that when the present power leadership corners these women who have contributed enormously over the many years, we give them the most appropriate recognition. Lastly, having been your most favorite son today, as far as I was the son, the only son sitting in front. <laughs> I thank you very much. And let me say, I wish Pao happy 60th anniversary. Long live Pao, long live African unity, and I thank you for your patience. Oh, yeah. thank you.